Hi, I'm Sasha Velour from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 9, and today I'm going to transform my face from raw egg to beautiful painted Fabergé egg with my classic Sasha Velour brow and lip combo. So today you can watch me go from this to this. So the first thing that I always start with is moisturizing and priming my face. I just think it helps the uh, helps the makeup last longer and helps preserve my skin a little bit. But the reality is I am in drag for sometimes like 12 to 15 hours, which probably isn't that good for your skin. And then I just immediately start slathering on my paint stick. Sometimes matching colors is really hard to your skin. There are there's not like unlimited color options out there, so you do often have to combine different colors to get the right mixture or just, sometimes the club lighting isn't that good. Sometimes you can just settle with an imperfect skin color for drag. Even freshly shaved, there's like a light blue undertone. And I have color corrected in my head with like an orange makeup, but most of the time I find it's not necessary if I just go in with this. So, I paint a grid on my head and then I fill it in. Then I will take a beauty blender that is slightly soaked in water and blend all of that in. So much of makeup, especially drag makeup, is it's not, your face is not just a flat surface unless you're very, very lucky. I have a really heavy brow bone and doing eyeliner that properly matches those spaces is really tricky and I had to just try a lot of different things on my face. I'm probably using the beauty blender wrong. I think you're supposed to tap it, but who has time to tap all over their face? I just smear it. Actually, while we were filming, while we were filming the show, Trinity encouraged us to all get faster at painting. And she said, like, you're not gonna like to hear this, but you should time yourself to go as fast as you possibly can. Make it a game, make it a competition. And that was actually like the best piece of makeup advice that I've ever gotten. Basically, when I do my contour, I think of it as penciling my entire face. And it's perfect, because I haven't set anything with powder, so I can easily like erase it away with this. So the first thing I always do is uh, my nose. And I have a very round nose, and I want to make it pointy and dramatic, like all the female villains of film that I model myself after. So I put like a heavy shadow underneath in a kind of sharp shape to make it look like that's where my nose ends. And then I'm gonna pencil out the fundamental shape of my eye. I have to do like a thick enough black that the line doesn't get lost in this part of my bone. So I try to go up and over it and like continue on to the brow bone with the cat eye. So I'm gonna do my crease actually right below my brow bone. And I can't continue it that far because my actual brow bone is really, really heavy right here. So I, I kind of found what looks best on me is like a partial crease that kind of fades out just right there, directly under the brow. Okay, I'm trying to sketch the brow in. I like a really, really arched brow. <laughs> There's nothing as pleasurable as painting on a drag face when you have a completely smooth head. It's like, the makeup just feels like butter compared to when you're covering like textured brow hairs. So I also have pretty intense natural bones right here and I found if I try to do one of those really swooping big cheeks, it doesn't work because you can still see my actual cheekbone here and then the hollow underneath. My face is kind of currently like and I try to make it more like if that makes any sense. Okay, so then I just carve out the like a nice dome to the forehead and then fill in. And I do, I try to follow the, the line of my cat eye back into the forehead. So I bring that contour all the way up. I kind of like, I know it's weird, but I kind of like having a line going through the middle of my head. It's just as pleasing to me. It's like painting an Easter egg. A lot of queens carve out this part of their chin and jaw. And I just, I don't. I, when I see pictures of myself, I used to do it, and then I would see pictures of myself performing, and when I lip sync, I'm like, <laughs> and I could always see, like, a, because your skin shifts when you perform, when you, like, open your mouth, I would see this, like, really intense line, like, almost like I painted on 
brown there. It just wasn't working. Just start tapping and blending everything. I think it's good that it has a little makeup on it because it just helps soften everything. And I start but with the edges first while it's kind of clean. And then once the sponge gets dirtier, I'll move in to fill in the, the big spaces. And now I'm gonna go in and do my highlight. And I start my highlight with just clown white because I am that pale. Tip of the nose, everyone loves to highlight. You basically like you paint the light onto yourself. So you paint the shadows in first and then you paint where you want to be extra, extra bright. And yeah, I paint highlight all the way onto the edges of my nose because I do want to cancel out the little bit of shadow that lives right there. And the shadow from my kind of circular nose that goes onto this spot. And then I'm just gonna paint along this new giant cheekbone that I make for myself. And then I'll take this down onto the upper lip. Then I go in and do the brow shape. Okay, so I think I see enough to set this in powder and to start going in with black and heavier colors. I use th three to four different colors of powder to set my face. And the first thing that I do is just use a nice powder puff and a basic like neutral set color to cover my whole face. And then I go on top of that with darker colors for the contour powder and lighter super white colors for the highlight. I'm gonna try not to make too much of a mess. Of course, I wear all black and this table is all black, so it's gonna look amazing. But I will say I had the cleanest makeup station of all the girls during season nine. I was literally the only person washing my brushes. The only person washing my brushes. Fun story, this powder still has some glitter because Aja decided to do a glitter lip on top of my open jar powder one day. I just take the lid and I put in a darker colored powder. For me, that's an olive color. That would not be a contour color on everyone. And then I, some, I mix in a little like banana colored powder because I like to transition from the really dark brown like upwards a little bit into the super white. So then I just take like a really thin edge of my puff and I go in to tap out the contour shade. I just shade kind of from the brow up and over and then kind of it goes back and then from here kind of coming up. Basically to make my cheekbone, instead of my cheekbone going from the top of my ear down there, I want my cheekbone to be like And then I'm even gonna go in and, and shade in here. Uh, just cause not everyone needs this, but for me, I really I have to wrestle with the light hitting my actual brow bone, and so I can use as much kind of contour as I can. And I'm gonna go in with the slightly lighter color and just fade out the edges of this contour. And sometimes I will take this and I will do a little bit down here, just with this more banana-y color, so it's not, I think sometimes with the white jaw, it looks too strong, or, uh, or sometimes you can even see a little bit of undertone. So I take this super white highlighting clown white powder and just trace along those highlight areas. So I am going to blend this all in with a fluffy brush and then I will get to eyeliner. I always do a gel liner with a brush. I think it's the most precise way to do it and um, it lasts. If I had to paint my face with one product, I would need black eyeliner. I'm pretty much just following the contour that I sketched out earlier, and I do think, you know, I like to test it raising my brow and also like lowering it, but it's at a pretty safe place where, um, because it surpasses the natural crease that I have, it's not gonna smear when I blink. And I like to make the edges really, really clean. The tip for clean edges is um, a clean brush. <laughs> it's like one stage where the talking always stops. And for me, it's always when I do my eyeliner because it's it's like the most delicate and temperamental part of the face. <laughs> that was the end of that sentence. There are a lot of different ways to do the inside of your eye. I love the little like bird point sharp kind of owl eye. So now the next thing that I do after I do this is I set my brow in place. And I'll use a brown color for the brow. But sometimes I, I use, I use at least two colors, sometimes 
three or four colors in my brow because the way that I like to do it is with lots of little fine hairs and I think that works best when they're different colors. So I start doing kind of angled hair lines along the, along the brow shape. And I try to make sure that they're a little bit darker on the bottom. My goal has always been to do a different brow than the ubiquitous ombre brow, uh, which I never really liked the look of too much anyways. And then especially cause it was like, there was a moment where it was like, if you're not doing an ombre brow, you're not doing drag. I'm gonna go in with a lighter color of brown first, and then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of black <laughs> to make it super dark. I'm gonna use this especially at the top of the brow cause I do think it, it looks best when it fades to darker on the, on the bottom because that's really where the line needs to be defined. This kind of lighter color, I'm also gonna put into my crease. And then for me, I found I couldn't really resolve the end of the, bre of the crease very easily. Some people like to bring it kind of up like this. Like, um, some people bring it right down into the liner and then blur up. I found for me, the best solution is to kind of just fade it out right around this point where it hits the brow. My, my brow bone. My brows need a little bit more to my eye, so I'm gonna go in with the black now. And I'm gonna go in and add the center piece of my un my kind of non-unibrow. It's a nice signature element and I like for my face to be clearly and dramatically designed in a way that it's recognizable again and again, even in different costumes with different hair. And this to me is a really great way to achieve that. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and, and color in these areas a little bit. I usually use, like, sometimes I use browns. I've been really into using purples recently because I think when I study my actual skin in daylight, I see a lot of purple in it, so I think it's a color that complements me the best. And I don't contour that heavily. I like it to look. I don't know, sometimes I say that to people and they're like, that is heavy makeup. <laughs> but sometimes compared with other drag queens, it's the lines aren't as dark. I am mixing in that purple with a kind of pink, warm, orangey blush to kind of make a little softer. And I also add the same color then to the tip of my nose and sometimes even my chin and my forehead, just kind of warm up all those areas. And then I'll use a smaller brush and just dust these parts of the brow bone with that too. And then I dip this smaller brush in the um, in the purple and I really shade in the bottom so that the, the sharpness of the cheekbone really pops. So then sometimes I just leave it nice and open, but today I'm gonna put a little black shadow running from the line underneath there. Something that I do to protect myself because there's always fallout of the black shadow is to put some extra powder right here. And then I follow along, not from the actual corner of my eye, but then even up. And I put along, I don't go all the way back in because I want to leave a little openness there. And then I'll take a fluffier brush and I'm actually going with a little pink color and fade out that black into a kind of warm. I'm gonna mascara. So I'm gonna go ahead and put lashes on. I use one pair of Human Hair 301 lashes. So I'm gonna dip those. I start with the inner bit, and I put that on as close as I can to the, to the line, and then I curve this bit up so that it lives way, afar, way above my actual lash, because I do want it to curve up with my new eyeliner. Maybe they could go higher, but if I put it too much higher, it feels really crazy and uncomfortable and it's hard to blink. I'm gonna do a little bottom lash because I did the dark shadow underneath, so I think that'll look nice. And I do them basically right at the actual lash. Okay, and now that I have this somewhat set, I'm gonna go on to my lips. For my lips, I use four products, two different liners, a gloss, and then glitter. And then I start painting on this little mustache, little John Waters mustache in red <laughs> to make the upper part of my lip. I like a nice, uh, a nice bow to the lip and then I like to come down either right where my lips end or a little bit further on the top, which can make them look kind of plump. There's a happy place that I think everyone has of just the right amount of overlining where it looks, it, it's kind of like the, the bright part catches what could be a highlight on a larger lip, even though it's actually the edge of your real lip. 
Um, and if you go too much farther than that, then you end up, you don't see any curve. Also, I'm like, I'm running out of space in between my lips and my nose. Okay, so now I'm gonna just fill it in all with this kind of bricky red color. Even though I save the lips for the last, I feel like once I have lips on is the moment that I start to see Sasha Velour. I'm gonna go and darken all the edges with a nice purple color. Even though the purple won't really show up in the final color, it's gonna look really red. I do think this contrasting darker color is necessary to really reshape your lips and to like draw on a really beautiful overdrawn lip. And this one I just put on the edges and kind of feather in with light strokes. And then on the inside corners too. That's like a good trick just to make your lips look bigger. So then I'm gonna kind of blend it all together with a red gloss. This gloss kind of seals it in. And I don't put the gloss all the way to the edges. I really just hit mostly the part just, just outside of my natural lip. I'm going to take a little spray adhesive and some red theatrical glitter. And I will, um, I spray a little adhesive on first with a little brush and then I tap that same brush into the glitter and I just apply it. Literally, as long as I'm somewhat careful with my mouth, like I don't eat a giant sandwich, it stays on all night. The amount of glitter that I eat is very large. Well, this is not the clown white. Um, this is a like just a very light natural color. And I do the edges of my lips. And then I'm gonna take a little bit and add it into the brow. And then the final, final step is I use a little like super concentrated shimmer powder and I put that on a couple places. Most important is the tip of my nose. And then coming up slightly along the, along the bridge. And then I'll put a little bit here on the cheekbone as well. So now I have finished with the makeup portion and I'm going to go change into my costume for the final reveal. And the beauty, monster, evil queen look is complete. Be sure to check me out on Instagram, at Sasha Velour, and also check out my self-published drag magazine, Velour, the drag magazine, at the drag magazine, which charts the artistic creations of drag queens and kings around the country and the world. Hey, squirrel friend, when one video ends, just open up another one. It's called binge viewing. Go ahead. I support you.